How's it going YouTube? We are back with another Anthem video, the live stream is over and we have a bunch of notes to go through. There was a lot discussed in the stream, what they're fixing, what they're still working on, what they hope to achieve, some community questions were answered, so in this video we're pretty much going to go over a quick recap of what was said, what was done and hopefully will give us a better understanding of where Anthem is going. So real fair, a Reddit user released some live stream notes for us to go through. They're pretty comprehensive, they were pretty much on track with the notes I was taking. There is a few things here that was missed so I'll fill in the gaps. So let's start with bug fixes for the 12th of March patch. The patch will have fixes for crashes like the PlayStation 4 crash. They claim that when working with Sony, they claim that there were no PS4s that were bricked that they know of and that they can be powered back on. Much like what the Sony rep said on Reddit yesterday. So with that said, it seems the people claiming that their PS4s were bricked were in fact incorrect and simply didn't know how to put it back on. Saying that though, it shouldn't have been doing this in the first place and I'm not condoning or defending Bioware or Sony for the fact that the game is turning off. However, it is also worth noting that Spider-Man and God of War were also shutting down the PS4. I didn't hear any controversy or any people crying about the fact that this was happening. So it does get you wondering, where were all these people that are crying now about Anthem when Spider-Man and God of War were doing exactly the same thing? It is unacceptable, I am not defending it, but the double standards with the community is pretty high with this one. The level 1 defender bug, or all level 1 weapons in general, which actually do a hell of a lot more damage right now, will be fixed very soon. In fact, it will be, in fact, it will be fixed latest 12th. It's a very easy fix according to Ben, so this is one that will be fixed quite soon. He did actually turn around and say the level 1 bug was actually a funny one, even though it wasn't funny. It is a simple fix. Quick play fixes. They believe they have fixed the bugs for the ones they know of or that have been reported. This next one is pretty cool. If you were down when a titan dies, you never got any loot and you pretty much had to do it again, especially with the titan effect that was here. A friend of mine died twice just before the end and didn't get any loot. Well, that's been fixed. If you are down when a titan dies, you'll still get the loot and credit. I think that's a good change and this is how it should have been from the very beginning. For PC, Mouse Button 4 is no longer bound to the escape. Why was it ever bound to the escape? Fixed a bunch of occurrences where you will spawn behind a wall after respawning. <laughs> that happened to my friend. He wasn't very happy. We had to carry him. Ultimate ability bar appearing when it shouldn't be ready should be fixed. I hope so, because I had that today in the stronghold and it was really annoying. Fixed more sound bugs, and there is a lot of sound bugs, like a lot. I've got sound popping just by talking to people in the game on PSN chat because of this game. So it's really annoying, and I hope the patch on the 12th actually fixes this because it's it actually hurts my ears at times. When we're blocking ults, we'll be fixed with the patch. Gunslinger Mark will be fixed and will be usable again. This isn't a complete list of the 12th of March patch bug fixes. This isn't a list of the 12th of March patch bug fixes. There will be complete notes on Tuesday. The list that I've just gone through is pretty much the stuff they confirmed on the stream. Next we move on to the quality of life improvements. Star Expedition can now be done by holding the button regardless of whether you're in the party or not. This is pretty damn awesome. This is one of the features that actually pissed me off a lot when I was playing solo, having to go all the way to my javelin considering how far away we started. I just want to be able to get into my javelin from wherever I am and just get going. I get that the emergent aspect of it gets lost, but at this point in time if you're going to do it for a full group, do it for solo. The Colossus animation is basically being changed after you've hit a wall or when you've taken over hit or if you've overheated. Unlike the other javelins which were a lot more agile and could get back on their feet and move quicker, the Colossus took a little bit of time. They fixed the animation for this, reduced the animation for this and hopefully this should allow us thick boys to basically get back on our feet quicker and get going. People being downed was one of the biggest issues that were complained about. Well, there's a lot of respawn restricted areas now removed. 
for example, there are now respawn timers in strongholds which are set to 30 seconds. And Ben went on to say that the majority of these restrictions have been lifted, but there are still the odd few mission where it's paramount for it to remain in place. But at least the majority has been removed, right? So it should make the experience of gameplay just that bit better. Free play server notifications will no longer pop up as much. Currently you would get a notification two hours before, and then it would pretty much remind you every five minutes that the server is shutting down. This has now been reduced exponentially and you will not see it nowhere near as much or as prominently as such. The message open the cortex and tag whatever item you wanted to tag has been removed. It was one of the most annoying features in the game, no matter whether you turn off tutorials or not. This one thing just kept on appearing, appearing so much that you wanted to punch your screen. Well, Bioware have done the ultimate fix. They've literally removed the code for that aspect of the bug. So we will never see this again, thank god. Random stronghold selection has been added back in, however no bonuses as of yet. Next we go to balanced gameplay changes. Melees and ultimates have been adjusted to be better in higher difficulties, and power numbers on gear have been adjusted for damage scaling so masterworks numbers will be higher, you're not stronger, but your melee and ultimates will be because of the higher numbers. So from what I'm hearing, Masterworks is now going to be level 61 and Legendaries will be 67. And this was something that Ben just threw out there on stream. So it is subject to change, but from what I'm understanding, it's literally just a way of increasing the melee and ultimates, not the weapon damage itself. Though it doesn't state anything about weapons, it does clearly say the power numbers on gear, like ordnance launchers and things like this, have been adjusted for damage scaling. So I assume the gear itself will also scale with the level. Wind wall damage absorbed has been increased. Because of this increase, they've shortened how long they will remain active. 20 seconds instead of 60, but it absorbs a hell of a lot more damage. You can now prime titans. No, not right now from the 12th of March, but yes, Titans are now primable for you to deal even more damage and take them down that bit faster, considering they're very immune and take almost zero damage at times when they are enclosed and not engulfing, I think this is a great addition. They've also increased the damage of a lot of monster work weapons, and I guess this is to compensate for the melee and ultimate change with the higher gear score, so it kind of makes sense. On the topic of loot, green and white will be removed at level 30, now confirmed for the 12th of March patch. This is definitely going in, that as of that date, as of that patch, green and whites will no longer be a thing. Hallelujah! They are currently looking at GM2 and 3 in regards to loot and effectiveness. There is no change for this on the 12th of March. Likely there won't be a change for this after either, they just need time in order to assess everything else and to get a better grasp of what they need to do in order to fix this. So right now, do not do GM2 or 3, it's really not worth it, stick to GM1 is the consensus. I guess they should have really locked it out and left it locked it out. They did at the beginning gate GM2 and 3, maybe this is why, maybe it just simply wasn't ready. The next issues will be outside of the 12th of March content patch but stuff that will be coming by the end of March, with some luck. Support gear. They want to do more. There is no ETA however. They wanted to see how many people use them, what is missing for certain javelins and go from there. At the moment they do have a good idea of a lot of these questions so they are starting to get into a good place in order to deliver this content. In the stream, they said there will be a post soon about what each inscription does. This has now since been posted and a link to this is in the description below for you to go and gander. It's pretty comprehensive, it's pretty awesome, I highly recommend if you're interested in Anthem to check that page out. It does teach you a lot and it does break things down in a good way. Stat page, yes the big one, yes they need one and the community consistently tell them that they need one and they agree, they're still working out how quickly they can do it and when they can bring it out. The community has provided a lot of concept designs for them, some a lot better than others and well the developers and the community managers are well aware of these designs so hopefully one of them will make it in and we can start getting a stat page soon because god only knows we desperately need one right now. 
The question was raised about EXP being useful outside of Alliance, and what they said was the XP being useful for other things other than Alliance will be addressed later. Currently it's just not high priority and everything else is taking precedence. The health UA bug isn't going to be in the 12th of March patch, so this will still be there for you to keep an eye on. Their goal for streams is now roughly every two weeks. And finally, DLSS support is being worked on and coming in the future, as opposed to when they originally hoped it would be here. Next we move over to the community questions, I'm going to skip over the ones that I've already answered. Next content drop. When is it? There are many things stated for March, and our plans are still to release the things listed in the 90 day roadmap. Our goal is to have Elysium chests in the game by the end of the month. So with the new fixes that are coming for the stronghold on the 12th of March, this Elysium chest will go hand in hand. Any word about events? There Be Giants is an event we've run and plan to run again. We've been toying around with the smaller changes to free play with plans for larger events in the future. Limited time events will happen. For example, Outlaw Outrage has a named outlaw that drops better loot roaming free play. We've decided it would be better to have a smaller area on the map that we direct you to for free play events in the future because currently they could be anywhere on the map and you simply have no idea which makes this outlaw event completely and utterly pointless because no one's going to go scour the map for one NPC just because it might drop better loot. It's just not going to happen. Support gear. What's the deal? We would like to add Masterworks support gear soonish. There is no timeline on it, but it is being discussed. This is pretty cool because at the present time, no support gear being in Masterworks is a real big downer, especially when everything else is either legendary or Masterworks, your support gear is pretty much stuck on purple and it just... The OCD in me kills me. The sound bugs. BioWare say they found a whole bunch of sound bugs that caused the game's audio to mute and fixed a lot of them. No promises that all of them have been fixed, but they hopefully have catched most of them. A little while ago I was talking about the ultimate buff, here's a better explanation as it was in response to a question by the community. One of the things we weren't happy about is how combat abilities don't have scaling. For example, there is no melee ability item, no ultimate ability item, etc. Particularly the ranger's ultimate and interceptor's melee, we've improved that scaling. Part of that we've had to change some of the itemization, so you will see different power levels than you've seen before. Instead of 45 power level, you should now see 61. This doesn't affect your overall build and is strictly for damage scaling. Does that make GM3 easier now? Your melee and ultimate should do more damage. Yaro's dance which puts Shepard to shame has been requested as an emote. It's been passed on to the team, so this will definitely at some point appear on the store, which I will be buying without a doubt. And the rest of the questions I covered earlier. They continue to say we've heard the feedback about the store, we're just trying to figure out what to do about it. We hear the feedback, we just need to work out the new options. We're still very open to making changes to loot drops, it's better in our mind to make a change than watch it, make a change than watch it, and so on. We're hoping removing uncommon and common items from the loot pool will help, as well as reviewing GM2 and 3. Unfortunately, GM2 and 3 changes will not be in this upcoming patch or the one after. So it seems after the 12th patch, we're going to be getting another one, which I assume is the end of the month changes. We won't be getting any fixes for GM2 and 3 in that one either. It seems the next changes we get will be based on one after. And well, that's pretty much everything from the stream. I did watch it, that pretty much comprehensively covers everything. If you found this video useful, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe and share. And until the next video, remain legend.